Hello and welcome to Veterans Remember. Uh, I'm Dick Gooding, uh, your local veterans representative involved with interviewing and dis having discussions with local veterans, both from Hopkinton and the local surrounding areas, where they have an opportunity to talk to us a little bit about uh, some of their experiences, both uh, in the service, wherever they may have served, and uh, also a little bit about their, uh, uh, their home and their upbringing. And uh, I'd like to today welcome uh, Ernie Paolini. And uh, Ernie he lives in Hopkins, has lived here for a long time, and uh, grew up in Westboro, I believe. Isn't yes. that right, Ernie? Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we love we love Westboro, <laughs> and we're yeah. happy to have Westboro folk here. And yeah, well, make it quick. My brother, older brother Rocky, became the fire chief in Westboro after after the war years. Yeah, he served in England. They shipped him over to a Limey firefighting boat. They, they asked him to make the tea. He made it and they knew right off. Said, you didn't boil the water, did you? <laughs> <laughs> they knew. But now, anyway. Now you, you came from a large, pretty large yeah, was family. 13. And uh, my parents came from Italy, Abruzzi County, both of them. Cornelia and Pascotti, close to the Adriatic. Well, there was 13 and I explained there, I remember. I was a 10th one born in the house, 10 Pine Street, and I have a sister, Marge Santoro in Milford. She's 10 years older than me. She's 98. <laughs> so the 10s are tens. wild, huh? Three 10s are uh, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, uh, you grew up in Westboro, and yes. uh, uh, you went to the schools in Westboro? Mm-hmm. And uh, did you start working uh, a no, job? No, as a I didn't graduate but for one year of high school. I was going to go to a back to, then they call it trade school. It wasn't technical. Trades, and fe all the fellows told me I had a chance to work for the Bay State of Brazil as an apprentice. And uh, uh, the, uh, some of the older fellows said, you know, you got, you got a chance. You, I'd go to work in a shop because you learn a heck of a lot more in a shorter time. And I found that out later when I was in the Navy in Minnesota. I went four months to a school, and I realized that I did learn more. The year eight and eight months at base eight, and of course it was only four months, but I knew what they were going through. So uh, well, Bay State did, was a was a real well, big company the at third, that they point. They were the in third time. largest you know, manufacturers of abrasives. Hmm. And of course, I worked in the machine shop. Yeah. yeah. I knew, so you were working for Bay State when you went into the Navy. Yes. Tell us about uh, the Navy. Why, why did you go into the Navy? Well, and... to begin with, uh, they had the, 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 what do you call it, the service. The war broke out. You had to sign up. We had to go to Grafton. I don't know why, but we had to go to, the, to Grafton to sign up. And I signed up, you know, for the service. In the meanwhile, I thought some of my pals that basically would join the Navy. Lefty Miller tried it. And for some reason they canceled them. And later on, the, the army took them. But that's beside the point. Well, the See, army. I'm, I'm from the army. We yeah. took almost everybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I joined the navy, and when I got home on the first leave, they said the sheriff Sheen came down the house, and Mr. Poindier's son has been, you know, selected for civil service. He said, "Oh, he's in the high seas. He's in the navy." Oh, so they're going <laughs> to draft. They were going to draft you. They didn't have to. I wasn't drafted. <laughs> no. So he said, "Oh, that's good," and that's it. I'm in the navy. Yeah. Where did you do your basic training, Ernie? Uh, Great Lakes. Oh, outside of Chicago? Uh, out of Chicago, yes. Hmm. My, uh, my stepdad was an instructor uh, uh, during the war in, uh, uh, in Great Lakes. Is that right? Yes. I remember the uh, 1609. <laughs> I remember the yeah. barracks we were in. Yeah. From there, it was probably a couple of months. Then we went home, came back to us for a couple of weeks, leave the summer. went back there, and OGU was outgoing. From there, we went to Minnesota. Minnesota. St. Paul. The, the Navy went to Minnesota. Minnesota. I have a there close friend who wrote to there, me. A close friend wrote to me and said, "What are you doing? Where in the middle of the country? St. Paul, Minnesota." Well, that's where we went. We went. To, they had machinists. Oh, so it's so it additional Saint training. Paul. Additional it's called training. Farm campus, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I also learned that World War One, they did it to train men oh. for, 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 for you know, machinists, but. During the peaceful years, I don't think they had it, but they started in again for the, for the, war, for the World War II. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Well, after uh, after you did your basic uh, and then that advanced that training, where did you uh, where there, did you get your next I assignment? I got to leave. Uh, went to Philadelphia. Philadelphia Navy Yard. Philadelphia Navy Yard. We were there uh, May, June, June, July, and uh, June, July, and early part of August. This Couple is forty months. for three. Huh? Forty three. Yes. Yes, 1943. Then, then uh, we went to Sparrows Point, Maryland to commission the USS Ashtabula. Oh, tell us about the Ashtabula. Now, it, we commissioned it there. Mm -hmm. It was uh, 553 feet long, the largest Navy tanker. And they said the Navy was very short of tankers during World War II. And from there, we went to Norfolk to outfit it Navy style. Now, so this was a brand new boat. Oh, yeah. yeah. New crew, because <laughs> some of the old timers, Nancy were. And we went there, and I found out that later on during the war years, I found out that a, a merchant tanker, you could walk from the fire room to the engine room. The Navy law, you had a bulkhead between both of them. They I suppose they figured if you got torpedoed, well, you'd save one or the other, sure. right? But the merchant ships, right through. I found that out. Yeah. Out when I was well, you uh, so it was commissioned. At, where is that in Norfolk? I assume. But it was commissioned Norfolk? at Sparrows Point. Sparrows Point. It was built there. Then we went to Norfolk to check it out. Yeah. And then we had the we had the degauss it where they put these big wires over to take all. You know when they work on a ship, you have to uh, like even an automobile they sure. have a system. Anyway, then we went, picked up oil at Aruba. Aruba was the largest oil refinery at the time. Oh, is that right? We, yes. Jeez. And uh, we had a chance to go over, you uh, have Liberty there while we were there. And I asked the young fellow, he said, they wore sarongs. And I said, what did you do before, you know, this oil refinery? He said, dig for gold. He said, but not much. Dig he, for he's gold? Implying, yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> but later on, there is. They do mine zinc there. Yeah. That's beside the point. I did learn that. But then we went to the canal, and we had a problem with the... I the, Pan the, the Panama the, Canal. Yes, yeah. we went through the canal. It was quite interesting. And we had a problem with what they call the Quimbley screw that fed the oil to the fire, you know, fire before boilers so are generated. This, 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 boilers. this is this brand new ship. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to wait for quite a while. We spent a little bit of time in Panama. Then after we got straight up, we went out to the Pacific, and you could read all the other things. Well, uh, when you get out into the Pacific, did you have uh, some sort of a shakedown cruise uh, before you? Uh, oh, I'm glad to, that goes back at Sparrows Point when they built the ship. Mm -hmm. The shakedown took place at the, what do you call it, in the body of water that goes to Washington. You can see Washington. What, the uh, Chesapeake Bay? Chesapeake Bay. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the gunners fly it up this floating raft with the big target on it. Yeah. And we had a chance to go swimming there, a <laughs> swimming party. The shakedown, oh, I never even mentioned, I got seasick. They said, <laughs> you you very got seasick? easy. <laughs> I felt like dying. <laughs> I'm telling you, and, but, I, but I never got, from then on, I never got it once. Really? Well, well, I good felt that, like dying. <laughs> it's good that you've got it taken care yeah, of early on. Well, they on. say the Chesapeake Bay has swells, and that's, you know, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, uh, after you got into the Pacific, uh, you started heading, I assume, towards, uh, uh, towards Hawaii or We're Japan? We're most of the South Pacific. Tonga, Dubu, Esprit, Dos Santos, Tatula. I remember a lot of them, more or less the South Pacific. Then we started to go north to the Marshall Islands. And you were delivering uh, oil to the Yeah, to different the, fuel, to the fleet? different ships, yeah. I see. And uh, uh, so you went uh, to the, the southern islands, and this is what, and now you're in 1944? 1944, yes. Then the, when, in 1944, we went to the Marshall Islands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One, now, uh, uh, 12 days after, the Marines and so forth landed there. The Japanese came back and bombed uh, uh, Roy, what they call Roy Island. Roy and Island. And there was a lot of uh, barrels of uh, well, ammunition and barrels of high-test fuel and stuff like that. We lost a few uh, Marines, I think. 
Hmm. They bombed at night. We we watched it, the fire burn in the morning, two o'clock to you know daybreak almost. Hmm. Boy, yeah. that's that's something. Now I understand your your uh, ship was uh, torpedoed. Yes. Uh, tell tell me later on. We, tell uh, us about that. we went to the Philippines, mm -hmm. and I'll never forget. I I learned this later on with this uh, CD called uh, Showdown at Lady Gulf. I didn't even know it then. I remember we were headed towards the Philippines and to the left, see all these small ships. I said, gee, they must be innocent fishermen or something. They're, they're letting them go. They couldn't even be Japanese. But I lay around it with MacArthur's fleet. All of them, they had no, very little superstructure. Right. So it was quite a distance. This is why I thought they were small. And he landed, like, you know, MacArthur landed there with his, with his fleet and, and yeah. So we, we went to, we, we were actually in the Lagoon, we, we, uh, uh, we were in uh, uh, the Philippines, we were in the Lazy Gulf. The war took place all around it. Right. But yeah, we, we took a torpedo there. And this uh, from a submarine? Or no, from, an air from a plane. From a plane? And behind us, I, learned, I, I did learn it later on, it was brought up years later, but uh, we heard about, behind us was an ammo ship Ammunition ship loaded down, but the enemy, even over here, they they want tankers. If they could sure. get tankers, they could cripple a lot, do a lot more damage than you know blowing up an ammunition ship. Mm -hmm. So, uh, were, did you have anyone hurt on your on well, your ship? Well, when we get told, you know, a guy was blown out of his shoes. Was blown out of his shoes. <laughs> yeah, he was walking <laughs> by, and uh, the big on the tankers, the large. Uh, uh, Sight holes with a lid on it, and a, a blue a torpedo came in on port side. It blew the lid off, and the guy was near. And he kept walking. He was in stock of his feet, but we're lucky. Yeah, we're very lucky. Yeah. yeah. Now this is still the Astabula that that you're on. Huh? You were. This was the Astabula that that all of this took place. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Now where did so so that was in the Lady Gulf and that was uh, middle of 44? Yes. Then we uh, we uh, we went to uh, Palau, Palau, it was Palu, it was Palu Island and it was recorded that some uh, uh, Japanese or two of them uh, may climb the board of the ship. And I don't think any damage, but anyway, so we had at night uh, the, uh, the boat crew circle around and around. We we never had any problems. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So where did uh, where did you go? Where did your ship go to from uh, Palo? Then from Palau? there we did go back to Hawaii. With that, then we took her back to stateside, and they in two weeks they had it ready to go again. I took the first oh, after, leave. after you had after your torpedo. Uh, torpedo. We came back stateside, mm -hmm. and they, of course they had everything ready. And I had the first leave one week. And that was done out where, out on the West Coast? Yes, yeah, Sparrows, Sparrows Point in uh, L.A. I'm not L.A., San, San Pedro, San, San Diego around, uh, around San uh, Diego, Long I'm Beach. Sure. It's close, right. close to Long Beach. It's Long Beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Long Beach, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, then, then you we headed went back. out again. And where did you go from there? From there, we went to different islands. We went over oh, we the Yellow Sea, went to Korea. And uh, uh, now the war was just, let's see, we went, the, we went to the Yellow Sea and our gun crew, we once in a while to see a floating mine mm -hmm. and they would shoot it to you know, explode Blow so mines. we wouldn't hit it ourselves. And, uh, and we went way up to uh, uh, China. I had, uh, I had, uh, we had Liberty in China. Taku was the name of the place. Then after that, the, uh, it tells in my book where we were at the time the war was over. Your book, you mentioned your book. Uh, the maybe, Log. Well, the, maybe you maybe could show us. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh -huh. hey, yeah, oh, a lot of the stuff is in there. Okay, this is the log of the... And, and As to be, yeah, all the, during the war years, the ships we fueled and all that, there he is, Bill yeah. Hosley. Oh, Bull Halsey. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh Bull. This is, oh, so Major, this is a, a that, history of your, of your that's ship. That's the things that happened. That's right. Huh. AO-51. That's what she looked like. And Hank showed you this one here. Whoops. That's okay. That's what, in 1968, they did the ship over. 
and it looked like that. Now you can see the original ship. I like the original ship. <laughs> you like the They're original all, ship. Yeah, that is the original right there. Typical tanker. And that's the modified. So after the war, they, uh, uh, they modified it. In 1968, that's what they did. Uh -huh. They had everything on it then. We were just sure. They mentioned the book. It says, a loaf of bread to nuts and bolts, and plus the fuel. Did the... Uh, Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor was its birth yeah, during, and, after the war. And, and during the 60s when they expanded it, did it serve over in Vietnam? Yes, it served both those two, Korea and Vietnam, yeah. Oh, so the right. Ashtabula has a long yeah. and storied history. That's right. Yeah. Well, when did you, uh, when did you leave the Ashtabula? In the early 46. Mm-hmm. So this is well after the war was over. Yeah, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah. you decided to, to leave the service at that point, or? Well, yes, I, I just went in, you know, as a reserve, mm -hmm. yeah. Now you came back, uh, came back to Westboro after the right. war, right? And tell us a little bit about uh, what then, you did after you. Then I got married. Okay. See, oh, I met my wife, and she's a Hopkintonian. <laughs> I got well, a little that, Well, great. Now, it's now, good to hear okay, you've got now, such okay, good breeding. I'll tell you the whole story. <laughs> I met her through Norman and Clara Kimball. Sure. Now Clara is at Brampton Circle, where I am. Mm -hmm. she, I hardly ever see her anymore. But Norman passed away about ten years ago. Mm -hmm. They introduced her to me because she was a, she graduated with them. Mm -hmm. And the, Norman worked at Bay State like I did. We learned to be a machinist. And so I had a date with her. And then uh, I bought this '36 Chevrolet car. And I, we dated about a year and eight months. And. Uh, that's when our uh, mothers got together and found out, oh, uh, see, she was born in Westboro the same day as I was. And our mothers had the same doctor, Dr. Healy. Right? I found that out. But uh, we didn't know about it. Uh, uh, I didn't know she was born in Westboro until we got together. And what happened when she was born in Westboro, a little under two years old, her parents moved to Framingham and Holliston a short while, mm -hmm. and then they came to Hopkinton. By the way, that building that blew up downtown, mm -hmm. my wife, when she was a little over two years old, said that she, they lived there for about six months. She was on the top floor. Oh. You know, I just thought I'd mention that. Sure. You know, when she heard about it, it was you know, quite sad yeah. about the two little girls. That was a real but tragedy. She, well, that's where they lived. And then, as I say, we dated, and uh, uh, about a year and eight months. Then there again. Then I went in the service, but we got married in '46, and we came to Hopkinton. We lived in Grosse for you know, a short while. Then we went down to where Western Nurses are and Franklin Road. That house on the right. corner. We had our first child there. Oh. But the house that she lived in, the last one in Hopkinton. It's where Colorado's market is. They, they destroyed the house, two houses there, matter of fact. Right. I think. Yeah. Right. Well, oh, that, yeah. that was so, right in behind the old town barn yeah, at that's that time. Right. I remember the town barn. Yeah. You know, yeah. So we moved there. Then uh, from there, we moved to Marshall Avenue 10 years. That was a new street. Then Maple Street Extension for about 11. Then we moved to Park Street by the Common. Mm -hmm. 18 years, I can't believe it. It was very, very peaceful up there, though. Well, the common mm -hmm. still looks pretty good. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, we wish the fountain could get going again. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> the fountain. Yeah. A lot of us wondered where the, uh, remember the honor roll that used to be up there? Yeah, that's the, right, the yeah, honor we roll. All, we all wonder where that went. Yeah. We see pictures every once in a while. Somebody brings out a picture of all the, that's all right. the veterans' names who were on the, that's uh, right. on the honor roll. Uh, I think the Historical Society has been trying to uh, you know, Replenish rebuild it. that, but uh, yeah. well, maybe that'll happen Wait, one of these days. I'm sure too. they will. Now, tell yeah. us about your children. You've you've got some yeah, uh, no, children. Yeah, now Cherry was born on the Franklin Road down there by Western Nurseries mm -hmm. in that house, and Bobby was born on Marshall Avenue. Now, when they grew up, Sherry married. Well, her draw, her first marriage didn't turn out good. <laughs> Third fellow from Quincy. He, I liked the guy, but he wanted to be the boss. <laughs> then she remar remarried a Lindy Goodman from who uh, just retired from Lincoln Lab, who was there many years. Mm -hmm. Then Bobby married Peggy 
Pondley. Right. And he's down there at the colony farm now. Right. Yeah, and I go down there, have a garden. I like I like it down there. I That's do Squash End, right? Uh, yeah, I do yeah. different things. Well, I, I married one of the Bokers. And, Is that uh, real? Yeah, so of course. There's, there's yeah. still a few Bokers down yeah. there now. Uh, John and uh, Dickie and Violet are right. all, all down there. Mm -hmm. and, then, and Tom is in the old homestead yeah. next to, yeah. yeah. So so you have a garden down there? Oh, you keep, yeah. You keep it? Uh, oh, yeah, you have fun with the animals. <laughs> if you have a garden, you know, <laughs> rabbits, deer, woodchucks, <laughs> raccoons. Yeah. They ate two rows of my corn. <laughs> ate two raccoons, rows of your corn? Two, two rows of it. It's only 10 <laughs> feet long. I had five. I got three left. <laughs> <laughs> Well, can you uh, share any more of, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about your your time in the service? You've you sort of walked us through the chronology of uh, yeah, of your yeah. service. Well, I met around. a lot of nice, you know, nice felt Navy men. Yeah. Yeah, I met a lot of nice guys. And uh, yeah. and it helped it, uh, the training that you received, I assume. Uh, Bay State of Braces yeah, was happy, yeah, to, happy to welcome you back yeah, when you get back yes, after war. Yes, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and, and did uh, did you work at Norimac as well? Yes, I did. Oh, with Kenny after Cameron. 20 years at Bay State, I wanted to get more under my belt. I wasn't really, I just wanted to get out and do something else, mm -hmm. work another shop, and I did, and I was very happy working with Kenny Cameron. The shop is still exists over there. His son-in-law, Joe Connie, runs right. the place. Right, right. And, uh, it's very successful. Joe's, Joe's just uh, sort of yeah, rebuilt the yeah. family, uh, yeah. the family homestead down that, there on College right. Street. Oh yeah, he's doing a great job down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a that's a beautiful. It's a good home. sign that things are going good over there. Things must be going well at Normac. Yeah, huh? yeah. Well, listen, uh, you know, it's it's uh, fascinating to to uh, to talk with you, and uh, you know, we're glad that you were able to. Uh, Share, share your story uh, mm -hmm. with us and uh, you know the the audience our friends here have had a chance to hear and uh, and and you know see you during this uh, session of veterans remember yeah. uh, many of the folks uh, uh, will react to this story and uh, you know you you commented well you're just an ordinary yeah, an ordinary yeah well, I, mean, I was lucky I mean I didn't see anything compared to some of the stuff I heard well, about but I, I did come, we did come close at times I know that but I'm here oh I gotta tell you about a dream I mean I got a 10 bloopers I wrote down 10 bloopers two, okay about 10, 10, but about three years ago I had to when Hank interviews me I'll tell there's one of them, I had a dream, we were out there, and they on the Astrobule on the Pacific, I had a dream that that ship was torpedoed, and I'm in the water with the life, life jacket, and I'm swimming through this raft with other sailors on it, so I went up to it and went like this, I held my hand up, and a hand came down and pulled me up, but I never saw the face. I so hope it was Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was. I'm Maybe here. Maybe it was. Tell us a little more of your bloopers. You have some other bloopers? Oh, yeah. Chief Jackie, he's from Mansfield, Mass. We're in the fire room. We're at sea. And I was, uh, uh, I was ready to go on duty an hour, you know, before that. But I went, I went down to the fire room flats, you know, you, you, you know, you're hanging around. Maybe I shouldn't have, I don't know. So this guy, Red Ruckman, he was up to what they call the Hagen board, the control board of the four generators. They, we call them generators, they're not boilers. And he did a he was pulling, he cut in number one. Burner. Well, I opened the oil valve right off, I forgot. They didn't put the atomizer in, it's this long. Yeah. And when it's all rigged up, so when you open that valve, the oil shoots back away from the fireside because you make smoke, the enemy will see you. Chief Jacket was sitting down at a chair, I gave him an oil bath, and then later on we came the best of friends. He <laughs> told me, please, you're not the only guy who did this. He says, I've been in the Navy a long time, he said, I've seen it done before. The atomizer wasn't in there. Yeah. See, what we, they clean the atomizer tips every uh, uh, every uh, 24 hours, mm -hmm. and it was being cleaned, I guess, it wasn't in there, so when I opened it up, number one, <laughs> it was shot back. So tell us, you got any more bloopers? Yeah, then another time, uh, uh, the Schmidt I was telling you about corrected the name, Paul Paolini. Mm -hmm. he, we were on the Pacific somewhere, 
And I, we had a chance for a, a leave. He had a chance to go ashore for a leave. He said, please, we're taking on fresh water for our domestic tank, which mm -hmm. is uh, located in the steering engine room. He said, about 5 o'clock, he went at 1 o'clock about. About 5 o'clock down there and shut off the valves that go to the, you know, the two, two domestic water tanks. Okay. It was 2 o'clock at 2.30. Some guy come running up from the steering engine room. They were shooting dice down there. You're not supposed to. <laughs> anyway, he planted the, the, the ship. We got almost a foot of water back there floating around. I ran back there and I shut the valves off. But this water, the only thing they had to get rid of the water, I'll never understand it, is a steam injector. You open up the steam and it shot the water off not very much. So I got all <laughs> two guys, we got buckets going up and down the grates, dumping the water over side. <laughs> we got them we got it all out though. But it was funny because the guy told me, Oh, you want to, you know, go down and take it until four or five hours and then within a couple of hours. The tanks were filled, but the water was spilling into the steering engine room. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ernie, Ernie, we really thank you for sharing uh, your stories with us today, particularly these bloopers that, yeah, that oh, you I mentioned. I got some more, but thank and, you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you commented you were just an, an, an ordinary uh, sailor, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's clear to all of us in the audience and uh, to me that uh, you've done some extraordinary things. And uh, you may think that you're just an ordinary sailor, but uh, it means an awful lot for you to share uh, these experiences that I know that yeah, you had really impacted in a very short period of time of a couple yeah. of years. And uh, I think it's just fascinating, uh, and uh, we certainly are, are happy that you've called Hopkin in your home, even though you yeah. spent a lot of time in Westboro. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would like to, uh, uh, once again, uh, thank you for, on behalf of Veterans Remember, and uh, we will uh, interview additional veterans, and uh, we continue to do this, and we think it's just a great way to uh, uh, capture these stories and we hope that we can uh, share these with children in, in our town uh, through the libraries and through the schools.